Hey peeps, and welcome to an IC82 workshop video, a workshop Wednesday. They're, yep, they're back. <laughs> I've still got heaps of mail to do. In fact, it's just in the background over there. But um, I thought I'd give Craig the week off and crack on with some coach projects that need starting. Um, basically, I've got three coaches here. If you can cast your mind back months and months ago, maybe even a year ago or something, I had a gorgeous Regional Railways Mark 1 coach by Backman that, um, well, it had its windows smashed in. <laughs> yep, some youths came along, some up to no good chavs, uh, grabbed a load of bricks and smashed all the windows in. I, I really don't know why it happened, but um, basically every single window pane down one side, one side of the coach came loose and they all need a fixing into place properly. But whilst I've got the coach open like this, I'm also going to take the opportunity to sit people inside it and fit another lighting strip, another train tech lighting strip in the roof. Because I want at least one rake of coaches that is absolutely exquisite. And so I'm going to make, seeing as the Regional Railways livery is one of my favourite liveries, I'm going to make my Mark 1 Regional Railways rake of coaches absolutely perfect with people and lighting strips in every single coach and you're going to see that happen. I'm not going to show you every single second of every part of it because I think you'll all fall asleep but I am going to certainly show you the key elements to that project. So this is one little project if you like, one little sub project um, but I also have been sent in a couple of coaches by you the viewer. The next project is this coach. This is also a BR Mark 1 coach, which has been sent in to me by... I'll just look him up. Yeah, I think it's a Tom, T-H-O-M. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a Tom from Stockport, near Manchester, that sent this in. I think it's... I th if I recall... I mean, I get a lot of mail, but if I recall, it's a coach he used to run on his Thomas and Friends layout years and years ago. And basically, this is one of the only elements to survive. So he sent it in to see if I can do some restoration work on it. It's not too bad. It's in, it's, it's in pretty good condition. It is really grubby though. Really grubby, really mucky. And so I'm gonna do a really nice job of this for Tom and get it sent back to him. So you're gonna see me, again, dismantle this, clean it all up, fit a lighting strip inside, put some people in, uh, add some weathering to the bogies, replace the coupling that's missing. Basically get it, as, basically get it as good as can be. And then I shall send it back to Tom. So that's really cool. Uh, finally, we've got bits of a coach that were sent in by, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> time to consult the database again. I should have done this before, shouldn't I? Okay, I'm back. Yeah, <laughs> if you can cast your minds way back to January or around then, and Alex Holt from down south sent in parts, well, he sent in pretty much a complete Mark 1 coach, but in bits. And he also sent in a Class 31 by Lima, which he was hoping Crewworks could service and restore. Um, it's still yet to visit Crewworks, I'm afraid. That's how busy Crewworks is. But um, research has been completed on that now, so that will start soon, which is really good. But he also sent in this coach. He, I, think he, I think the coach is to keep. He did. I don't think he wants the coach back. I think he said, I can keep the coach, but um, once I've restored it, I will offer it to him. I will get in touch and say, look, you know, do you want it back? It's up to you. I can send it with the loco if you want. We have a Mark 1 body here, which is in pretty good condition, to be honest. Although it is missing windows, so that's going to be interesting. Um, there's the weight, the, the, the ballast, which adds, you know, um, weight <laughs> to it, funnily enough. Um, that needs reattaching. There's the inside, that's the, the corridor, so you can see it's a, a corridor coach um, with, you know, little individual compartments and stuff, just like in the olden days. And then there's a pair of bogies here with no couplings at all, although I think maybe coupling assemblies were included, um, they may have been put somewhere else. So yeah, that's going to be quite a, a quite a restoration project. My, my biggest concern is definitely the, the, um, the couplings, because if we have a look at the bottom of this regional railways one, you can see that basically the coupling here has a sort of like spring-loaded twisty-turny mechanism at each end. You see that? 
and this coach is completely lacking those. I do think maybe they have arrived, maybe they were put somewhere, I'll have to check. If not, I'm going to have to source some from somewhere else and then replace them and get, get it working again. So that coach is going to need a lot of work. So I shall do that one last, okay? So we'll put that one back over here because I shall do that last. I mean, I'm going to have to go on the internet and find parts and order them and yeah, it's quite, say still, <laughs> it's going to take quite a bit of work. This one sent in by Tom isn't too bad. I shall start on that one second. But firstly, I'm going to work on this gorgeous regional railways coach. So, look, I mean, just look at this. Look at the windows, how loose they are. I mean, that's just not good enough, is it? Look, look at that, it's rubbish. You can see where um, glue has been applied to the window frames, but it's just not held. I don't know whether it's the heat, it could be the heat, um, or if they just didn't apply it well enough, but for whatever reason, all of those windows are loose, so that's no good. They're gonna have to be glued back in place. Glued with what? Well, um, I shall sand down all the areas where the glue has been. Uh, that does two things. One, it gets rid of the gunk that was there in the first place. And two, it creates a, a rough surface for the new glue to adhere to. Now, there are several different kinds of glue you can use, but I've done this before, and trusty old poly cement is actually really quite good. So long as you are really careful and don't apply too much, you get a really, really strong precision job. Tacky wax is no good here. Tacky wax is perfect for decals and really, really fine bits of detail. And then I'm going to seat lots of bums <laughs> on these seats. Look at all those compartments. Loads of capacity in there. So I am going to put loads and loads of people in. Now, the people aren't quite, well, they're not cheap. To buy a whole load of people is actually quite expensive. One way you can save money is buying them in bulk. <laughs> That's the world we live in. You can buy people in bulk. <laughs> so here we go. This is, oh gosh, it's pronunciation time, offender nation time. I think it's Prizer. I think it's Prizer. It could be Prizer. I have no idea. Whatever I say, I'm going to get it wrong anyway. But whatever, <laughs> however you pronounce them, this company is fantastic for getting hold of people. I mean, like, look at all those. Okay, those are the painted ones, those are the finished job. But look how ace that is. I mean, they just look great, don't they? And look at the little snapshot they've done. They've included of them all set in place. Brilliant. But yes, I'm afraid they come like that. Totally, <laughs> totally unpainted and um, well, you could put them in a coach in that condition, I suppose, but it might scare the living daylights out of everybody on your layout. So I'm going to paint them. Um, now, actually, if I just open this package, I just want to see what the finish is like. Ooh, careful. Uh, hmm. What am I doing? Well, I'm basically just trying to see how easily paint will adhere to these figures. I mean, it's great that they're white, but to be honest, they're a little bit waxy. They're a little bit, yeah, a little bit shiny. Paint might struggle. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to treat them with an undercoat first. This is the one we want. It's called Primer, and it's number one. Couldn't be simpler, could it? Yeah, well, you'd think. There we go. Listen for the rattle. You know you're in for a good time when something rattles. <laughs> yeah, this stuff is fantastic. The finish it leaves on anything is perfect for painting. So I'm going to take these figures to, sh to a well-ventilated area. I would go outside, but it's absolutely chucking it down, so I can't do that. I'm going to take this to the conservatory, lay it on some paper, and give them a good coating. Okay, so once you've given the can a really good shake, um, 
basically just hold it about three or four inches away and then the trick is to fire in short sharp bursts like thus and then give yourself another little shake and then repeat and that's it don't do any more because you'll ruin it what you need to do now is leave it for a while let it dry and then you need to spin it round or flip it over and basically make sure that everywhere has got an even, co an even coat. And it's better to make sure you do it this way and take your time than rush it and end up with globbly walls of paint everywhere. Okay, so whilst we wait for those figures to dry, I might as well work on these windows. So I'm just gonna get all the windows out first. There we go, that wasn't hard. Now you can see what I mean. There's basically lots of gluey gunk where the windows were stuck and that now needs removing. It would also be of benefit to get the gunk off the windows themselves. So using this emery board, or to use its technical term, sandpaper on a stick, <laughs> I'm going to file all of that down now. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes, so I'm just, yeah, I'm just gonna check and that's perfectly dry. In fact, that's really good. But this side, without flipping them around still isn't done. There are, because of the angle that's been sprayed at, there are still parts that need doing. So I'm just gonna flip it around to the other side, give it a quick shake. Okay, and we're good to go again. Remember, short, sharp bursts. That's probably that side perfect now. So again, I'll leave it another 15 minutes, flip it over, and then do the final side. Okay, that's all done. Time to get rid of all this mess and then give them a wipe. Okay, we're ready. This has been sanded down and cleaned and the windows are sanded down and cleaned as well. You'll have to excuse my rather wavy cutting mat, it's, a, it's just a cheaper one. Um, <laughs> it's not worth spending a fortune on a high quality one every time because we get through a lot of them. So yeah, this is fine. And right, I now need to, um, well, they go in in a certain way. There's a certain order to them. Uh, so I need to just remind myself of that order. I think this one goes, nope, yep, nope. Nope. Uh, nope. Um, ah, yes. Yes, that's what's, yeah. Okay, so this one goes there. This one has a window in the center, which means it must go there, which means that one must go there. And then these two go at the end with that one going, no. There we go, yes, that one goes there. And then that one goes there. When doing this, it's a good idea to just practice it just like I have, because you need to make sure that the windows are going in in the correct place and the right way round, the right way up. So for example, we've got the first class and the no smoking signs at the top of the windows as they should be. So they're ready now, they're ready to be glued into place. So I'll take them all out again, line them above where they go. Okay, so how I'm gonna do this is one by one, basically, putting a little bit of poly cement around the outside and then putting it into position. And now you can see, if I get close up on this, if my hands help the camera to focus, here we go. Do you see that rough patch there? The sandpaper's done that. 
and that's exactly where I'm going to apply the poly cement and it should help it to adhere to the, the side of the coach. So remember folks, the key is less is more. <laughs> so don't put too much on. Just a little wiggle like that is more than enough. It's only a window. There we go. Now poly cement is pretty quick drying. It's usually dry within about 10 or 15 minutes depending on, depending on the model. And uh, already that doesn't want to move. So I think it's probably safe to press ahead and do the rest. Don't worry too much about getting the back sides, you know, the reverse, the inner part of the windows dirty, like grubby and stuff. You can clean that after. Just make sure that you don't put too much poly cement on. You don't want any of that glue seeping out into the actual window. Yeah, they seem pretty good and already they're, they're drying into position. I'm just going to flip the coach round to just make sure that no glue has seeped out anywhere. And I think you'll agree, that's pretty successful. So it's just a, a case of leaving that plenty of time to dry now. Okay, it's been about half an hour. I've got my preezer, prizer, um, sprue of people here, just how people should come, I think. And as you can see, the paint is just fantastic on them. They're perfectly primed and ready to be painted. And as for our coach, our coach side with all the windows, there we go, all nicely in place. So they just need a little bit of a, a wipe with the microfiber cloth again. Uh, in fact, there's no time like the present. Here we go. So that is good to go. And the people are good to go also. Um, <laughs> right, yes, okay, these need painting now. <laughs> okay, that's going to be quite a job. I'm not going to paint them in this video because it will take absolutely ages to do all of these but I will show you just a few of them in the next video and by then I should also have a train tech lighting strip to fit to the roof.